Hey there, homeowner. Rich from Solar Microscope here. I help educate homeowners so they can look under the microscope at solar before they decide to add it to their home to save money. I personally don't sell solar, but I've educated over two and a half billion people with my simple YouTube ads about solar energy. So I'm in the advertising industry, but one of the big questions homeowners have is how much can solar panels really save me? For my first house, I saved about $80 a month with a power purchase agreement, which means that the solar was totally free. On my second house, I bought the solar panels with low interest financing and immediately started saving between $300 and $500 per month, depending on the season. On my rental property, my tenants love the solar because they save between $150 to $300 per month. The question is, can you see the same types of savings? And if you qualify for solar, then yes, most likely you can. It just depends on a number of factors. So how do you qualify? That's probably the question you're asking. So a certified solar engineer can design a system for you and your family very quickly and it can estimate the approximate savings you can expect for your home. Many things go into these designs. So for instance, number one is the angle of your roof. The angle of your roof will determine how much energy the panels can capture from the sun. A study was done in England where they measured different angles for rooftop solar and the technical term for this is called azimuth. Imagine you're dropping a basketball on the top of your roof and just watching it fall off the edge of the roof. How quickly that basketball rolls off determines the angle and the azimuth of your roof. So the optimal azimuth found in this study was that it's between plus two degrees and negative four degrees, which is just a technical term for not having as much of a steep roof. You know, usually roofs that have more steep angles, they may not be able to capture as much energy from the sun as often, but it also depends on like the placement of your house and all these different mathematical considerations, which is important why you wanna get a solar engineer to design a customized proposal. And then the second thing is, you know, which direction do the panels on your roof face compared to the sun? So for best results, your solar panel should face toward the equator. If you live in the Northern hemisphere, like all Americans do, face them south. So if there's room on your roof or in your backyard, sometimes uh, homeowners prefer a ground mount system. Like for instance, if they have a patio cover or big space in their backyard where they can put a bunch of panels, you wanna face them south no matter what. And that's the ideal direction to face them, especially if you're in America. How much energy you consume on an annual basis is the third thing. Your annual energy consumption will determine how much energy you need to produce through your solar panels to achieve what's called net metering. Net metering is a technical technical term, which helps you offset the majority or entirety of your electric bill, minus whatever connection or utility fees there still might be. This is directly correlated to the fourth thing, which is how many panels you should get, because you don't want to get too many panels because it will lower the amount of savings that you have because you have to pay for those panels. But if you get too few of panels, you won't produce enough energy to offset your electric bill. So when you figure out your annual energy consumption, a solar engineer can then help you determine how many panels you will need to achieve net metering for your home. Fifth thing is how strong are the panels that you're getting for your home? Panels vary in strength and in cost, so it's important to make sure you get what's called tier one panels. They're the highest quality and have the highest strength based on current technology. I mean, the last thing is kind of an optional thing, but it, it does apply to certain states and certain situations is that many homeowners can benefit from adding a battery backup to their home. So a battery backup system, basically what that does is that when the energy is produced by your solar panels, it doesn't only go straight to the electric grid, Grid, but first is stored in your battery so you can power your home at night or in the winter when solar panel production is lower or non-existent at nighttime, obviously. So a battery backup can also help you keep the lights on if there's an energy outage. You know, this happens in California with all the blackouts. Battery and solar panels are the only people on the street that still have power when the power goes out. So that can help you have the convenience of still having power when the power goes out. Some utility companies in warm climates like California and Arizona, they have a utility policy known as time of use. So time of use means that the electric company can actually charge you a higher rate during peak hours of the day. So by utilizing a battery backup system, your battery can actually be strategic in providing energy to your home so that you're not getting energy from the grid during those peak hours of the day. And that'll ultimately save you more money, protect you from you know increases from the electric company. So those are really the most important factors, all six of those, which determine how much you can potentially save with solar panels on your home. Many homeowners in certain states save up to 50% on their monthly bills without spending anything out of pocket to get started. So if you're paying, let's say $200 per month to the electric company, you may be able to only pay $100 per month and use the same amount of power for the solar panels. So immediately you'll start saving $100 per month. Now that's just a hypothetical figure. And in other states, you may not realize as much savings right away. It might be a lower amount of savings monthly, but you'd be able to lock in a lower amount of payment over time. Because even if like electricity is cheaper in a certain 
certain state where you might not realize as much savings right away, you at least lock in a low payment for solar that's going to protect you from the electric company raising rates in the future. And electric companies raise rates like crazy. They only care about their stockholders and their investors and paying good dividends because that's why people invest in utility companies. They're seen as some of the safest investments, but that also means that you're at risk of increased rates every single year. And with inflation as crazy as it is right now, people are saying that some utility companies are raising rates as much as 20 or even 50% in the next year. So over time, it's really common for homeowners to save 25,000, 50,000, maybe even 100,000 over the lifetime of their system for 25 years. So it's definitely a worthwhile investment and you wanna see exactly how much you can save over the lifetime of your system. So to get specifics on your home, go to our website, solarmicroscope.com, to have a certified solar engineer send you a customized design. Like I said, I don't sell solar. I'm not in the solar industry, but I have triple verified installation partners in almost all 50 states. By being in the advertising industry, I've learned who the good people are in solar and who the bad people are in solar. So visit solarmicroscope.com to get your customized design for your home. And make sure you like, subscribe, and watch more of my videos so you can look under the microscope at solar before you decide to get it for your home. You'll be glad you did. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.